Hi, my name is Joella. We're not going to do the whole intro thing. You just have to know that I'm not going to give full synopses for these books. I'm just going to give you basically, when I go into the bookstore, this is my rough idea of these books. This is what I'm going to give you. So enjoy. First is American Gods by Neil Gaiman. I believe this is like set in our real time world and there's magic. So Neil Gaiman is a very established author. People love his books. Uh, I'm very keen for his Norse mythology book. This one book, ooh, I'm keen for it. American Gods seems to be well loved. So I'd like to try it sometime and you might too. Next is one of my favorite authors, uh, Naomi Novik and her Temeraire series. I am so keen for this book. We're following a guy and is like basically like pet dragon or rather like best friend dragon and their adventure and honestly seeing someone have such love for their pet or at least a relationship that it had to become a book with their pet ah this is worth it i really enjoy naomi novik's writing it's very beautiful but then at the same time you, we kind of get to the point we're not just sitting and like having beautiful words run through our mind no there's like purpose for it we're getting somewhere don't worry next is a song of blood and stone i saw this the other day and i was like "Ooh, this looks interesting to be honest i don't know much about it but i saw the cover and i saw I actually saw the sequel cover and i was like "Ooh!" and i saw the first book and i was like mm, i don't know this book looks interesting look into it more because i don't know i just looked at it i didn't even want to check like to know much more about it but i'm putting it on this list because i think it looks really cool i just kind of want to go into it blind so check it out next is the malazan series starting with the gardens of the moon this series is long no, not that long but it's long and a lot of people have read it and it seems to be a classic for fantasy in a way i don't, I don't think it's that old of a book series but hey here it is and it sounds cool um it seems to be one of those big worlds we uh, follow people but I don't know. Would I want to read it? No, it just doesn't seem like my type of book. I don't know what it is about this book, but it doesn't give me the vibe of a book that I would like. But maybe I'll try it out. Like just for the sake of at least giving this series a chance, it might be something I like. But at the moment, I'm not keen. Next is Game of Thrones, uh, A Song of Ice and Fire. This series, I mean, there's a TV show about it. If you don't know much about it, I would be shocked. Lots of political intrigue. We're following different family houses and... Uh, more dealing with monarchy systems we're dealing with so much it's a huge world and i think because i feel like if you're gonna describe modern day fantasy as well this is something to look at have i read the books myself i've read the first one and i really enjoyed it finished the series when we all hated season eight so i thought I might as well read the books and i'm keen i mean i'd love to see how the books are because they are very different from the show apparently and if I get to have more of the characters that I love so dearly from this series, then let us continue because I love, love this series and I can't wait to read the books. They are also very thick. Next is the Magician series by Raymond, Raymond E. Feist. I love this. It is a classic fantasy. We are, you know, every time I try to talk about it, try to summarize it, it's kind of hard. It's a big world. Uh, it's part of the Rift War saga. So cool where we have a bit of political intrigue. We have war and it's not like, it's not like a fantasy land where people like we have, we have like a lot of technological advancement. It seems like people are still kind of not there yet with technology and it's so cool. There's magic, there are different races of like, of peoples. There's uh, not humans, there are elves, there are giants. There's, it's so cool. It's so big. So many different people were following two best friends in the beginning and we continue in this very beautiful i don't know how to say dang every time i try to explain this series i, I start to ramble because i love it so much we follow pug and thomas um and we go from there i feel like explaining any more could ruin the experience i really do uh i mean if you want to read a classic fantasy this one i highly recommend love 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 next is the city of brass i believe it's part of a trilogy and it's kind of set uh, I, I believe it takes um inspiration i don't know from some kind of asian stories i believe there are jinn in the stories jinn relating to genies so there's a whole jinn world this is girl she finds a, a lamp i think or a genie and she gets exposed to this whole jinn world and we take off from there and it seems really cool one is not generic kind of uh, medieval kind of basic classic fantasy vibes is different so that's already something i'm keen for we're following a female character and i believe the jinn is male and i would love to see their dynamic i like mm, i don't know it just seems like there's gonna be a fun story and it's a thick 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 book so i'm gonna have a lot of fun just like diving head first into it
Next is the fifth season, the Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. This series is very loved, people really really love it, and I'm keen. I've been seeing a hell of a lot of praise for N.K. Jemisin, and I would love to jump the bandwagon and figure out whether I like the writing or not. It's a trilogy, so at least it's not that long of a series, but it seems like people are really invested in the story itself and the political intrigue that I believe is there because people tend to talk about how there's a bit of a mystery to the world and you have like you're not spoon fed information in the story you're definitely learning as you go through the book and that's something I do enjoy because I think it adds the immersion and that like I don't know how to put this but that like haze that you get into when you're in a book and you just like can't leave and it's kind of hard to tear your face from the book so I would love to read this because it seems like this is the type of book that will just keep you in and hold your attention for a very long time so mm, keen keen next is The Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb Robin Hobb has written a lot of fantasy books also kind of a classic fantasy medieval European kind of style of fantasy books so mm. I'm keen, I really like it, we're following a male character. He starts off as like scum basically in the story from what I've heard and then we follow him becoming basically the king's like servant, like sending him off to do jobs and we take off from there. But it turns out that this character, he kind of is kind of royal blood but something happened but it just sounds cool. If you want to see the real synopsis go go and check goodreads because right now i'm right now i'm just giving my just initial feelings about books and i'm not gonna give you a synopsis that's not what i'm here for i don't know what to say but i'm just keen for this i feel like it'll be fun to read something like this and also since it's more uh new and fantasy though it still has those classic elements to the fantasy i think it'll be easier to read and really fun at least for me at least that's what i think Next is The Night Circus, anything by Erin Morgenstern. There are two books by Erin Morgenstern, this one and The Starless Sea. I would call this alternative fantasy because it's not like fantasy, but it's like, I don't know how to put this, but it's very flowery, I'll tell you that. And the magic is very like, it seems to be in sync with the world, like the world and the magic are one. It's not like given a certain time period, you know how most fantasy books is like this like other time before we have phones and things. But then these two books seems to be when electricity is there, uh, the Star of the Sea takes place in modern time 2017, I think that's when it was set. And then in the Night Circus it's more like I'd say 1920s, 1950s, I'm not sure but it's more old but not that old or far back i enjoyed it but it was a type of fantasy book where i had to you no know, i didn't i shouldn't have read it the way i read it the first time i was definitely meant to take this in very slowly and read between the lines because it's such flowery language that it's very easy to miss something so definitely recommend reading it slow and taking your time with it if you want to really enjoy it next is the classic of the classic the lord of the rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. yeah tolkien Listen, I have not read the series, but I did watch the movie Tolkien and a lot of people did not like it, but I actually really liked it. It gave me the push to want to read The Lord of the Rings and even watch The Lord of the Rings movies. To be honest, I don't really know what the series is about. I know there's a guy called Sam and one with the letter F in his name starts with the letter F. I don't know much about the series. I really, I don't know at all. I just know it's like the classic of the classic of fantasy and people really love it. They're diehard fans. A lot of, a lot of fantasy that we read now is inspired by uh, the Lord of the Rings and I'm just keen. It seems to be a very big world, different races. Uh, we have elves, we have this, we have that, like all types of, all types of fun things. Not just human beings so that's great very excited for this it's it's old i mean i feel like everyone knows about the lord of the rings and i am the one who's behind next is jade city uh and has another book after it jade war i believe this series is, is love the people love it it's new and mm, it seems like it's not like the typical once again like a generic fantasy world or setting i believe it has uh asian influence to the story which is very exciting i honestly don't know what this book is about but I'm keen. It seems to be well loved and I sometimes you need that different kind of spice and I'm looking for more different kind of fantasy world settings that are not that generic or like basic in a way. Next is Queen of the Tearling. Oof, ugh. I saw the first book like two years ago and I saw it in front of my eyes. I didn't buy it. I wish I bought it now. So this girl who is a royal, she's kept away from like the castle and the peoples for many years. Now when she comes of a certain age, she, it's said that she has to go back and like, you know, live her life in court and all that but then dang things go wrong the people destroy her carriage just on the day she's supposed to get back and we take it from there lots of political intrigue from what i believe i don't think it's like a fighting kind of story our protagonist seems to be 
genuinely like a soft girl. She seems like she's that strong female character without having to be, you know, strong female character. So I'm keen for that. It's nice to see something other than Selena Sardothian every once in a while. Next is Gideon the Ninth. It deals with necromancy, so like the dead and magic, and that's all I know, and that's all I'm gonna give you because that's all I know. <laughs> Next is Middle Game. I don't know if this is part of a series. I think it's a standalone. It's about twins and there's magic. It won an award. So I thought it deserves to be on this list because it's definitely on my radar and shall be on yours if you so wish. <laughs> Ooh, Blood Song. I'm keen for this. This series sounds cool. We seem to follow a boy and they're at like a school for like, I'm not sure, I don't know if it's like assassins or it's like magic, but it looks pretty interesting. There's a sword on the cover, so I assume it has to do with fighting. I believe he makes friends, obviously, and we also follow the friends. I don't know if it's many perspectives or just one perspective, but I don't know, it sounds so cool. Elliot Brooks is a booktuber who we talked about it quite a lot, and it, I have always had interest for this series, so I'm keen, and you should be too. <laughs> Next is Kaigana. I believe it is a standalone and it just looks so cool. First things first, the name. Secondly, it's not, once again, the generic basic fantasy kind of setting, which is, by the way, there's nothing wrong with that kind of setting. I'm just saying that sometimes, you know, you need something different. I still very much love that kind of fantasy world and that kind of European setting. Still love it, but sometimes a girl needs to switch up. Yeah, Kaigana, standalone, number one. Keen. I like it. It looks beautiful. I don't know what it's about, but I'm keen. I'm like, you know, when you just look at a book and you're like, yes, <laughs> yes. Next is A Promise of Blood. It seems to be, okay, like fantasy, but then mixed with French Revolution kind of situation. And I'm already, I didn't need to know anything else. I just need to know that. Love history. So this is going to be fun for me. Obviously, I don't think it'll be very historically accurate, but it just seems like something for me. I love history. I love fantasy. We're putting them together. You're just asking me to be happy. Last one for now is The Rage of Dragons. And this is new. It's a new fantasy series. And it seems to be very well loved. They're dragons, for dang sakes. So why not? At least I assume they're dragons. I mean, I don't think you'd call something The Rage of Dragons and have dragons on it and they're not be dragons. To be honest, I don't really know much about this series, but they're dragons and keen. I think we've realized a lot of things in this video. I'm very easy to please. So this is the list of books. I'm keen for all of them. And yeah, if you end up seeing one that you're kind of interested in, let, let me know. Because the one I think I'm the most excited to read at some point is Taigana. That looks just, that's just some so cool. It just, I don't know why, but that one is really pulling my heartstrings. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was entertaining for you. That's all for now. Thank you for your time and goodbye.